So as you can see, it's done a pretty good job. Hello there, my name's Vince, I'm a composer, and I thought I'd do a very quick fly-through of a new orchestral workflow that I'm experimenting with using a program called Divisimate. So here we are in Logic, and I've got my orchestral template, it's still kind of a work in progress, but it's pretty standard, I've got a separate track per articulation here um, for the different instrumental groups, and I've also got Divisimate running at the same time in the background. I opened this up before I opened Logic, and as you can see, as you load it, it comes with 32 ports here, and each of these corresponds to a particular instrument. So I've got a template here, you can see, if I load that up, on the right-hand side you can see all the different instruments. Uh, and so over here in Logic, um, you'll notice that, say, if we look at strings and violin 1, up here in MIDI import, it says Divisimate port 28, which corresponds to the number over here, 28, violin 1. Um, and this MIDI import thing is something that only exists in 10.7, Logic 10.7. There is a way to use Divisimate with earlier versions of Logic, but it requires a bit more fiddling around, I think, in the environment window. With Logic 10.7, it's super easy. So what I've done is for every instrumental group, I've assigned uh, Divisimate as the MIDI import. And what this means is, say I want to play uh, five string parts at once and have the MIDI go to all of the, the proper tracks, um, I can select, say, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to have to activate these tracks, actually because the way that my template's set up, I don't have them all loaded into memory straight away. Okay, so all of these patches are loaded in. Um, and now uh, what I'm going to do is go over to Divisimate. I've actually got a template set up for this, so I'll click over here. And so as you can see, these numbers down the bottom refer to the number of voices, as in um, the number of notes in a chord. So if you're playing five note voicings on the keyboard, this is what this represents. So the first voice, i.e. the top voice, is being assigned to violin 1 and so on, violin 2. So you can set this up any way you like. Um, and so in theory, if I now play, I'm going to use a breath controller as well. Okay, so if I play one note, it's going to be sent to all of the tracks, as long as it's within range. It'll still record the MIDI data, I think, regardless. Um, so if I play multiple... Um, so let's try recording something. Uh, So as you can see, it's done a pretty good job. There are a few little errors here, but it's um, basically transcribed those. So then it would just be a case of getting rid of these little notes, maybe adjusting the note length slightly, you know, so that they're happening how you want. Um, Uh, maybe I'd adjust this one so that it's just a single note. You know, but basically from there it's just very simple kind of tweaking. Um, you know, the sort of alternative to this would be just to record it in on a string pad and then copy them over to the individual tracks and then delete the MIDI accordingly, which is fine to do. Um, what I quite like about this approach um, is, well, first of all, I could imagine it being very convenient if I was doing a lot of scoring of a particularly kind of medium to slow tempo piece that was kind of generally quite um, sort of legato-y and um, paddy. I could see this kind of technique uh, Going, becoming useful, um, but there's, there's kind of more to it than that. More powerfully, it lets you kind of experiment with orchestration, so if I get rid of that, um, what I think is cool is that it, you could, say, m um, make it so that this first voice also goes to a flute, say, 
and maybe you want, I don't know, the second voice to go to a clarinet. Uh, and maybe the first voice will also go to, uh, I don't know, a Glock, which I've got set to 27. Uh, I've got, you know, I'm sharing, because there are more instruments than there are ports, then I'm sharing harp. The harp channel also has piano, Glock, mallets, other things. Um, so now if I play, again in theory, oh, but I need to, what I need to do is activate these tracks. So I've decided I'm going to have flute, legato flute. So I'll load that in. You know, so it would require a bit of like forethought and kind of setting things up. Um, you know, deciding, okay, I want to experiment with this orchestration. And then once it is set up and rooted, you can kind of jam it out on the keyboard. I'm going to switch over to this keyboard actually over here. It's got a slightly bigger range. So obviously you need to make sure that the, uh, you know, the ranges correspond. But you can also um, make it so that uh, they're transposed. So, you know, when you play a G, it actually plays the G above and so on. So you can modify the MIDI streams that are being sent. So I don't know if you can really hear the flute in there. Um, make sure let's make sure that's active. In fact, ah, oh, that's why we couldn't hear the flute. Didn't actually activate them. That makes sense. Okay, so here it is. You know, so you get the idea. So yeah, that's basically the essence of how the plugin works. You kind of set up your, um, you choose your instruments, you decide how you want them to be rooted, um, so how it's going to distribute the uh, tracks. This kind of setup works very well for, as I say, slower material. If you want to do something a um, bit more agile, that's uh, possible. But once you're kind of in this mode, uh, generally, because it takes a bit of time to kind of figure things out, it's less likely to be accurate. And also, you know, you're going to be a bit... I mean, it's going to be hard to play something in five voice voices consistently at tempo anyway. So if um, another kind of alternative way of going would be, say I wanted um, a very agile flute line, say in the right hand, uh, doubled by a clarinet again, say, and an oboe. And in the left hand, I just want some kind of ploddy legato, say, cello and bassoon. Let's set up something like that. So um, in this case, I'm actually going to portion off part of the keyboard. Say uh, this much of the keyboard is going to just be... You get rid of these uh, things. I'm going to portion off... Uh, this melody section to, again, flute, uh, let's say oboe and clarinet. Um, and then the lower section is going to be cellos and the bassoons. Whoops, not that, sorry. This and the bassoons. Maybe just the first bassoon. Uh, and a bass clarinet, why not? Um, and so now it's kind of basically split my keyboard. So it's a bit like those um, Symphobia patches where they kind of give you a pre-made orchestration to just kind of jam out on. It's kind of like you get to create your own version of that, but sort of on the fly. Um, so I can imagine this being really useful. Um, crucially, the point is you're not locked into this workflow. So if I just hit B, then my template will just function as you'd expect. You just play stuff in normally. I mean, I've currently got all these tracks selected, so it's playing on all of them, but that's kind of a nice thing about it, is this is an entirely sort of optional workflow that doesn't really mess with your more conventional template setup. You just have to make sure that all the MIDI imports are set, and then that's pretty much it. You're kind of good to go. There's no real special special setup required other than that. Um, so, yeah, let's try this orchestration out. So, again, just need to make sure that all of the tracks are record-armed. Unfortunately, 
Um, I've seen other demos on YouTube where you can just have everything armed, um, and then it'll, when you play, it'll just record MIDI data onto the appropriate tracks. For some reason, in Logic, um, that doesn't really work. You end up with uh, MIDI data on every track if you record arm everything, at least from what I've I've experimented with. So, um, so yeah. So what we're doing: bassoon, flute, oboe, clarinet. So this time I'm going to load in my marcato patch for the flute rather than the legato, so I can play a bit more fluid lines. So in theory, in the lower part of the keyboard, we now have, and in the upper part. I'll play over here again so I've got a bit more range. So when you're in this mode, um, you can play a lot more agile lines, not just because you've got marcato patches rather than legato, but because when you're in this mode in Divisimate, using the um, kind of melody and low uh, portioned off sections of the keyboard, it's not doing any voice calculation, um, and therefore you can just play sort of how you'd expect. And if they're set, if, uh, if the patches are set to polyphonic, then you'll be able to play polyphonic. If they're set to monophonic, then you'll only be able to play monophonic. So I've got them set to polyphonic. And the nice thing about the marcato patches, I like to use them for shorts as well as long, so you can get all the kind of mediums as well. You get the idea. So, um, yeah, and then the other feature which I thought I'd quickly show off is um, I mentioned before you can modify the MIDI streams. So, um, let's, uh, what should we do? Let's just clear this. Um, we'll just go back to empty. Let's do um, some woodwindy things again, but um, let's kind of mess with it so that. Let's do a kind of melody based thing. Um, and let's have, again, we'll have these, maybe English horn this time as well. Uh, oh, let's go for a more double reedy sort of sound. So, like oboe, English horn, bassoon. Uh, okay, let's try that. And then what I'm going to do is rather than just uh, than playing the notes that you play on the keyboard. I'm going to put in, basically, this is like a sort of plug-in strip here. You can add transposer, and what I'm going to do is um, do something that's locked to a scale. So when you are locked to a scale, then the increments refer to the degrees of the scale, whereas if you're not locked to the scale, the increments refer to semitones. Um, so I'm going to lock to the scale, and I'm going to do like a fourthy thing. Um, so say so C down to G is uh, one, two, three steps. And then on the next one, I'm going to, oh, actually, no, sorry. I want the first one to be the melody note. And then the next one to be three. And then the next one to be another fourth below that. So three, four, five, six. Again, this is six. Uh, scale degrees rather than six semitones, whatever. So now, if I have those tracks recorded, uh, set to record in my, let's do legato ones again, since we can. Okay. So you got this really cool kind of quartal sound. So then say let's bring in the uh, the cello and the basses in octaves in the left hand. So let's do that and then I'm going to do um, cello transpose, transpose that up an octave. So just like that and then I'm going to set that here and also here and then so here we've got in the left hand and in the right hand uh, I'm going to have to switch to my other keyboard again because uh, so I've got more range. So 
also one thing I should mention is if you don't play enough voices to kind of fill out so you've got it set to to use um five voices so you're doing five voice chords actually I mean in this case we're just doing left and right or sort of melody and low but so you were using uh you know these uh, four voices or five voices like we had in the strings earlier um, this button over here will determine what happens um, if you're not playing enough notes to fill out all of the parts um, so if, generally I have it set to fill voices which is the most kind of useful for all situations um, but top down means that it will uh, fill up it'll use the the top um, Vo the top set of instruments, so voices one to four, if you only play four notes, or if you only play three notes, it'll use voices one to three, and then bottom up is the reverse. Um, fill voices if you only play three notes, then if it can, if all the instruments are in range, then it'll just double stuff on the other parts um, and just make sure that everything's playing at all times. Um, and so generally, like if you're kind of as I do, sort of jamming stuff out, and you're kind of ending up with a mix of like four and five note voicings, then yeah, then it kind of it makes sense um, when the MIDI comes out. Generally, like sometimes it'll just be in the four note ones, the bassoon will will double the oboe, or whatever it is. So um, so yeah, that's how that works. And yeah, is there anything else to show you? Um, that's sort of it, really. Um, so I think in summary. The, the way that I would use this is not as my primary way of composing, although maybe at the start it might be fun to kind of sketch out ideas. It's more of a sort of, yeah, it's more of a, a sketching out ideas or just jamming ideas kind of tool. If you're, particularly if you're a keyboard player, um, I think it could save you a lot of time. But what's nice, as I say, is you can always just hit B and bypass the plugin. And when you hit B, all of the tracks which have this set in the MIDI import will switch to behaving normally. If you have tracks loaded that don't have MIDI import assigned and it's just set to all by default, uh, then it'll behave rather strangely. And so in those situations, you actually need to hit escape and turn the plugin off completely. And then you'll be able to play the instruments normally. Uh, so that's a bit of a drag um, sometimes if you're like loading in a new instrument into your project and it's not already assigned to Divisimate, then it'll behave differently to the tracks which are assigned to Divisimate. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. But if you're kind of working from a template-based setup, then that doesn't really matter. Um, personally, the way I still like to write primarily, so, so far this is relatively new as well, but like a recent discovery, which you might have seen in a previous video, is to use kind of sketching pads where um, I've got multiple, like, uh, things layered within contacts to just give me very quick access to kind of polyphonic versatile patches so I, the way that I like to write primarily is just by kind of limiting myself to these where I just quickly sketch in ideas and then um, and then kind of re refining them by separating sp separating out the MIDI and dragging them into different uh, parts of the project here so um, for that workflow, Divisimate doesn't really help that much. Hi there, future Vince here. Um, I forgot to mention when I was recording the video that it is possible to take a pre-existing MIDI region that you've maybe edited within Logic and then run that through the Divisimate plugin after the fact. Um, and you do that using a feature within the plugin called Loopback, which has nothing to do with the other app called Loopback, by the way. It's just a simple case of setting the MIDI in port on the track to the Loopback channel instead, and also activating the Loopback feature in the settings of Divisimate itself. Then you just record enable all of the tracks and let it play through. And now back to the video. But I can imagine if I was writing and then there was a section which I knew just needed to be like adagio um, legato strings or something, then I could just quickly pull up Divisimate and play those in straight away and it would just go straight to the tracks without me having to do it on a string pad and then, uh, you know, separate it out later. Or if I kind of, uh, you know, reached a point in a track where I just wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do or I, th I had a, an idea, a very specific idea for orchestration that I knew that I would be able to kind of riff in using Divisimate and, you know, that would save me some time, then again, it's as you saw, it's not a very complicated process to uh, think of an orchestration, 
map it out onto DivisiMate, record arm the tracks, particularly when uh, you've been through this workflow a few more times. I'm still quite new to it, so it's taken me a while to, to do all the steps. But anyway, that's the concept. I haven't seen that many videos of you know professional composers using DivisiMate. I think it's partly because it's a relatively new tool. So yeah, that's my little overview of DivisiMate and how I'm using it and thinking about using it. Hope that's helpful. Uh, the program costs, uh, how much does it cost? 180 quid. So it's not cheap, you know, um, and unfortunately they don't have a free trial on at the moment, which is a shame because I think it's the sort of thing where you do really need to uh, try it out in your own setup, especially for me because the way that I'm using it is not um, the maybe the, the kind of endorsed way of using it. Like if you look at some of the DiviziMate uh, videos on their YouTube channel, which are very helpful for showing you how to set it up and everything, but they're generally like based around a DiviziMate only way of working um, or kind of, you know, using modeled instruments, which are very responsive, where you can have uh, all of your articulations on a single track. Um, I think in the real world, most composers aren't prepared to kind of shift the whole thing over. Um, so I think this this hybrid way of working I've discovered is possible, where you're kind of flipping back and forth and using DiviziMate for certain things. But um, yeah, I just didn't see that modeled very well on other YouTube videos. So. That's why I decided to make this one. DiviziMate people, if you're watching, I think definitely make a free trial available so that people can just try it out for themselves. Um, in terms of the accuracy of the, uh, you know, the translation from chords to individual parts, it's pretty good in general. Um, there are a few things in the settings you can play with to make the um, the reading a bit better depending on the kind of material that you're playing. Um, but yeah, I was really impressed, and it's definitely. I think an amazing um, kind of inspirational tool and an amazing writing tool. Um, there's also templates which you can download from the website. If you set up, as I have, if you set up all of the ports, the 32 ports, in the, up in the same way, corresponding to the same instruments, then you can download pre-made orchestral templates which do all sorts of crazy things, um, especially with the transpose uh, feature so that you can kind of play individual notes and get these crazy cool chord voicings or like open voicings from closed voicings and things like that um, making interesting doublings across parts and that can be really fun um, I think especially if you're sort of not that familiar with uh, orchestration that can maybe be a useful tool if you are curious to see more about the sketching approach that I mentioned you can check out uh, this video I'll put a link here which is my last video um, where I demo some of that but otherwise, uh, see you on the next one, and yeah, good luck with all of your compositions.